All right, our speaker today is our very own Rita Conrad. And Rita is, um, I wanna share with you, actively pursuing classes at uh, from Unity Village. And so she is ever more wise each day. And she's gonna share some of that today. So Rita, go ahead. Thank you, Brian. And I'm sure you're also thinking, gosh, if she could only be on time for things. <laughs> <laughs> That's another class I have to take. Thank you, Judy, for reading the Daily Word and Richard and Janice for your music and Tink. I think I'm done with my Sunday talk. Thank you so much. <laughs> that was such a great intro. And, uh, and it, it proved to me how the universe works because I usually am prompted to say, oh, review what everyone else has said during the month. And this time I didn't do it. And I was so grateful that you did because yeah, a lot of the things that Reverend Terry said and gratitude, we really need to practice. And, and what you suggested, I will take to heart. Um, but I wonder if you felt the change on Friday that I felt. You know, is there something a little different in the air? It was the day after Thanksgiving. We were all over our tryptophan comas. Well, in my house, what happens the day after Thanksgiving and what has happened for the 35, nearly 35 years I've known my husband is the same. The alarm goes off, that this is Friday after Thanksgiving, my husband sits straight up in bed, fully alert, ready to go, and he says two words, Christmas lights. The day after Thanksgiving traditionally has been the day he decks our house in the hopes that NASA will one day call him and say, Mr. Conrad, we can see your house from space. That's our tradition. Though we are technically still in the month of gratitude, most, if not all of this nation has now turned its attention to Christmas. We are now in the season of giving. And in fact, I heard those words when I was watching the Macy's Day Parade on Thursday. Welcome to the season of giving. And we know what happens in the season of giving. We know it is more blessed to give than to receive as Paul indicates in Acts 20, 35. And give we do. We give the perfect gifts. We create the perfect social gatherings. We bake and cook and send the perfect Christmas letter so that everyone we know will know that we remember them. And we do this in the hopes that we'll finally experience that Courier and Ives Christmas we've been dreaming of all our lives. I saw a wall hanging this year that really expresses it for me. It says, it's time, <coughs> excuse me, it's time for me to switch from my um, everyday anxiety to my more festive Christmas anxiety. So much giving. And in the process, we might find that we give much of ourselves away as well. There are many reasons we give. Giving makes us happy. There's scientific studies that indicate that giving will make us live longer. It gives our lives meaning. We've been told all our lives, it's the right thing to do. That's how we were raised, to give. And that giving expresses God. There are numerous Bible passages that urge us to give, that teach us how to give with an open, a joyful heart without expecting anything in return. We spend a great deal of time teaching children how to give. We know how important it is for an individual to be a giving individual. And about a week ago, I put a sticky note up on our front door and our back door because we were getting a little bit in too much into the what's gonna be on my Christmas list this year. That was my son. You know, he, he hits Christmas at the beginning of November, I think, but I wanted him to remember, you know, this is the season of giving. So I put up a, a sticky note that says, what will you do for someone else today? And it's been very interesting. We all go out the door now with that thought in our mind. What are we going to give and do for someone else? And it's been very interesting because even within the house, 
uh, without leaving the door through the door, we find ourselves doing more for each other as a family as well. So it's really created a very, one little note created a very interesting atmosphere I felt. But ironically, while we are so focused on giving, another season has quietly dawned. We are spiritually moving into the, the season of receiving. Today is the first Sunday of Advent, the season that Christianity recognizes as the time to prepare to receive Christ, celebrating not only the human entrance of Jesus into this world, but also receiving Christ in our lives. But not much, if anything, is said just about receiving. It's always wrapped up with giving and receiving. Not much is said either in the Christian scriptures or in unity writings. It's the law of giving and receiving that Charles Fillmore wrote about. But what is written about that law is primarily about giving. And I wonder, because we've never really focused just on receiving, do we really know what it means to receive? I think we can all agree that receiving involves being given something. Someone gives something to us and we take it. But receiving also involves accepting what you've been given. Receiving is the action, accepting is the response. Accepting is needed to complete that act of receiving. And that I think is the glitch in how we're receiving. Are we also accepting or how are we accepting? People wanna give us something, but we often are reluctant to accept it. We may say, oh, thank you, you shouldn't have. And inside we're thinking, and I really wish you hadn't. Because if we cherish our independence, as Tink was talking about, as many of us do, particularly as we move into our wisdom years, we may see receiving as a sign of weakness or that we have to acknowledge the weaknesses in order to receive something. You give me something in some way and I'm embarrassed that I needed you to do that. Receiving is deeply personal. The giver may be recognizing that you need something and you do and they're giving it to you, but we don't wanna accept the gift because it signifies letting them in, in some way. You may think to yourself, if I accept this, how am I gonna repay this gift? How will I return the favor? And in that instant, the gift is turned into a burden. A Course of Love in Treaties 2, Chapter 7, which is entitled, The Belief, Giving and Receiving as One, says, giving is not only about choosing what good and helpful parts of yourself you will share with the world. It is also about giving the world the opportunity to give back to you. It requires you to receive what the world gives back to you. It goes on in 718 to say, you who are beginning to realize that you have much to give this world, realize that you have as much to receive and receiving does not imply you are lacking. Why is it so vital that each of us receives and accepts what has been given to us? We need to honor that intertwined relationship of giving and receiving because it impacts universal abundance and prosperity. As Charles Fillmore wrote in Prosperity, trying to fix the channel through which the good must come to him is one of the ways in which the personal man shuts off his own supply. Not fully accepting what we receive is impacting that channel. Think of a garden hose that has a kink in it. If you don't receive and accept, blessings can't flow. They get stuck. We're not only blocking ourselves 
from abundance and prosperity, but we block someone else's blessing if we don't receive and accept because that blessing goes back to them. What if you went through the drive through of Starbucks and you paid for the coffee from the person behind you, that old pay forward, and the person behind you came up to the drive through and the, they said, oh, your coffee's paid for. And they go, oh, okay, take the coffee and drive off. The prosperity abundance chain is disrupted because of the way they took, but not necessarily received or accepted. I was struck by um, what Reverend Brian said on November 14th during the, the tithing, blessing of the tithing portion of our of the service, when he said, as we bless ourselves, we bless others. And as we receive, so do we bless others. A friend of mine, C.D. Vodders from Unity of Washington, D.C. wrote, we are to practice giving and receiving in equal measure, for in the circle of life, we are naturally giving and receiving to the universe, to the earth, to ourselves, to others, and we are required to do both. And it is so, the more we receive, the more we have to give. We give when we receive. Now we all know typical stories about giving and people randomly giving things to one another, but I wanna tell you one that another friend of mine uh, Doug Brackney told me, he's uh, from University, Unity of Springfield, Illinois, and he was telling me the story about his friend, um, Joan, his, his spiritual mentor, and, and it was about giving. We were discussing giving and receiving and how to be better receivers. And he said, you know, she's, she's been a good spiritual mentor to him. Uh, she's in her 90s now. Um, she married a successful doctor, has lots of initials after her name, including PhD, and has traveled the world many times over, a real powerhouse. And he said, um, he told me the story that Joan was visiting Nashville and she was staying at the Opryland Hotel. She went to the gift store uh, where there were a lot of costumes and performing costumes. And the sales clerk came up to her and said, oh, I really love that vest you're wearing. And Joan said, you do? Really? You love it? Really? And said, oh, she said, oh yeah, it looks great on you. And uh, Joan took off the vest and she gave it to the clerk. She goes, well, here, try it on, see what you think. And the, they were admiring how beautiful she looked. And John said, okay, great, it's yours, keep it. And the clerk did what all of us would do. Said, oh, no, 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 I can't afford to pay you for this. Right? Again, I need to do something. You're giving me a gift. Oh, I need to turn it into something else. And John said, you don't need to pay me for it, really. I want you to have it. And, and the sales clerk said, you know, I can't accept this. This is too extravagant. It's too much for me. I don't deserve this, as Tink was saying in her reading. Um, but Joan persisted and, you know, Joan, you can't, you can't say no to Joan. She insists and you do it. Doug told me, she said, no, keep it. So, and then she told the clerk, she says, really, I don't want to wear fur anymore, but I want this. I've loved this all my life and I want it to go to somebody else who's going to love it. So please take it. And so the clerk did. And, uh, Joan went on with her shopping. A few minutes later, the clerk comes back to her and she says, well, ma'am, I have to tell you, she says, I'm not just a sales clerk here. She said, I'm also the minister of the First Methodist Church and you're gonna be the Sunday message. <laughs> but the story doesn't end there because Joan explained that the reason she wanted to do this so much is that she grew up with very little in her life. Um, it was a large family. They didn't have a lot for accessories or extras or nice clothes or anything, but she grew up in a neighborhood where everybody was that way. So she didn't feel deprived. She didn't feel poor. She was happy until a wealthy family moved into the neighborhood. And they had a daughter named Eleanor who was two years older than Joan. And Joan said, Eleanor had the most beautiful clothes. In fact, the family would go twice a year to New York to buy the clothes. And, um, but so anyway, when Eleanor went to college, Eleanor's mother took an interest in Joan and said, you know, come on over and, you know, take, take some of these clothes. Joan, you know, she, Eleanor has too many clothes. Take some of these. And she gave Joan lots of Eleanor's outfits. Joan uh, said she specifically remembered a pleated black skirt. And she said, wearing that just made me feel so good. It made me feel like somebody I believed in myself a bit more. 
And if I can pass that gift on to another, you see why I had to give the sales clerk the vest and why it's so important to receive that she receive and accept it because Joan didn't want to give her a thing. She wanted to give her the feeling that would carry her through life. Doug went on to say that for many years, he himself had difficulty accepting anything, even a compliment, let alone a gift. Each time someone would give me something, he said, I mentally would calculate its worth so that I would reciprocate in some manner. Do you see what I did, he said? I turned the loving act of a gift into a duty. I had to do something back because they had done something for me. It was now a burden to repay it in some form or another, and I had to keep track of it. And he said, why is it so difficult to relax into the love of being gifted with something? And I love those words, that receiving is relaxing into the love of being gifted something the love of God enfolds us through the giving of others. Relax into the love of being given something. And also that includes all the gifts we've been given and talents we've been given. Relax into them. Doug went on to say a dinner, a movie, a scarf, a book, a kind word, gosh, sometimes even a compliment is hard to accept. But he said, Joan taught me how special I am and lavished, lavished me with compliments. And eventually I came to the point where I practiced enough that I could finally accept those kind words. I could finally receive those words. And he said, accept it, be gracious. And guess what? He said, one day you will receive the kindness easier and easier because after all, he said, we are all so easy to love. So to receive the Christ as we do during Advent, every day actually, but we honor in particular during Advent, it's vital that we receive being loved first and foremost. We have to receive being loved. So here's the heart of the matter. How do we become better receivers? And I'm going to share a few things with you from a wonderful article by Christiane Northrup. And I hope I remember how to do this. I haven't done it in such a long time. Okay. I hope you're seeing my slides or a blank slide. Yeah. Okay, great. So Dr. Christiane Northrup wrote a... Um, an article called Learn How to Receive with Joy. And if, if you're not familiar with uh, Dr. Northrup, she is a medical doctor and she uh, specializes in um, the unity of the body, mind, and the spirit so that it's holistic along with the medical aspect of it. And she uses it to empower um, others to trust their inner wisdom, not only about their bodies, but about life in general and their connection to source. So in this article, she gives us some tips. The first thing she says about how to receive joyfully, notice what you receive every day. She writes, whether you realize it or not, you actually are good at receiving. Perhaps there is someone who smiles at you as you walk by them on the street, someone who opens the door for you, a colleague at work who gives you feedback. We do accept those, we do appreciate those, we do receive those. And when you notice, how often you are receiving things, these everyday moments, you become more comfortable with the act of receiving in a larger way. And that larger way is the way in which we receive the Christ within us because it's the everyday events through which we receive Christ, not just during meditation or those silent spiritual moments, but every single second that we are receiving. The other thing she suggests is to say a change me prayer. And she got this, pardon me, I need a glass of water. She got this um, from Tasha Silver, who's a spiritual teacher. 
and author of the book, Change Me Prayers. And Tasha writes that you can say a change me prayer to help rewire your brain to be a better receiver. So this is one example of the change me prayer that Tasha writes. Divine beloved, please change me into one who is willing to receive. Please change me into someone who knows her own worth. Please change me into someone who is gratefully receives all that you have to offer me. Please change me into someone who provides others with the delight of giving to me. The third thing Dr. Northrup talks about is to feel the inherent divine of the giver. She writes, when a friend or family member offers you a gift, a compliment, or their time, take a moment to feel their soul. Perhaps the giver, even if they are a child, has something to teach it, to teach you. They're a teacher for you. This outlook can help you see their gifts in a new light and help you receive in a new way. When you feel the divine as part of your giving and receiving, you will notice how different these exchanges feel. The fourth thing she suggests is the one that I suspect trips us all up. And that is to accept all compliments. Resist the urge to deflect or downgrade by it by replying, oh, it was nothing. Or, or this old thing, I've had it for years. Or anyone can do this. That devalues the gift of the compliment you just received. Line up the compliment acceptance speeches and practice them so that you're ready for this. And just this past week, I had an opportunity to do this. I uh, was helped by a saying I read, which was this. If I stirred it with a spoon, it's homemade. And this helped me when I knew when I was going to be going to friend's house for Thanksgiving and I was bringing my trusty old green bean casserole, which takes like five seconds to throw together. But every year they ooh and ah over it. Every year they say, no one else makes this. Every year they say, we wait all year for this. We're so glad you're here, but we're really glad your casserole's here. Um, and I am so tempted to start deflecting it by saying, you know, well, you ought to thank Del Monte, Campbell's and French's because they made, they canned the ingredients or uh, saying, oh, it was nothing really. I can teach a small child to do this or a very talented, you know, family pet, anything, anyone can make this. But I paused and I remembered that I had stirred it. <laughs> so I replied, you're welcome. It's homemade. <laughs> but I had to practice that. As lesson 106 or 108 in A Course in Miracles says, I will receive what I am giving now. In giving joyfully with an open heart, so must we receive. And one of the last tips she gives is this, accept that you are enough because there are so many things in life, like so many things in life, Receiving joyfully is rooted in believing that you're worthy of receiving. Christiane Northrup shares that it may help to know that the word receive comes from the Latin word recipere, meaning to take back or to recover. This means that what you receive is already yours. Also, it may help to say, I love you to yourself often because that's all your inner child wants anyway. And when I read this, I couldn't help but think of beloved Louise Hay and her mirror work. There's a wonderful YouTube that Louise did about three years before she transitioned. And as I watched it, I chuckled when she said, in case you can't turn to your mirror and say, Rita, I love you. She said, at least say, Rita, I'm willing to learn to like you. <laughs> And she said, and you work your way up to it. But she said, look in the mirror often. She said, every time, she, she said, we need to talk to our mirrors a lot. And as we pass a mirror, say something nice to ourselves. 
She said when she uh, walks by a mirror, she would say things like, you look fantastic, kid. You may not be as taut and tight as you used to be, but you're fabulous. You're absolutely wonderful. In the video, Louise goes on to say, it's important to look in the mirror every day and also ask yourself, what can I give to you? How can I make you happy today? We'll never receive, be able to receive compliments from others if we can't first and foremost take the compliments from ourselves, if we can't receive and accept the love from ourselves. We receive, we give when we receive. We receive when we accept what we've been given. We're able to accept when we love ourselves as we love others. And that is one of the ways you know whether you are and have received the Christ within. Something to practice this month. April Marshall, another friend of mine uh, from Unity of Foothills in uh, Torrington, Connecticut said, if, you're, if we're taking care of ourselves, if we're loving ourselves, we're taking care of God. So it follows, if we're loving ourselves, we're loving God. We are receiving God. So in this season of receiving the Christ within, give to yourself as you would give to others. Bless others by receiving and accepting what they give to you. For it is by receiving from others you receive the Christ, both within the giver and within yourself. And lest we think that the month of gratitude is over, you know that gratitude is also intertwined with giving and receiving. We give grateful that we have something to give, and we receive grateful that we are so blessed. It is blessed just as blessed to receive as it is to give. Earlier, I told you about that sticky note that I have on our front door and it dawned on me that I think I need another one right below it. And I'm gonna add it today and it's this. How will you receive what you are given today? And so it is. <laughs>